Hey everybody, welcome back to Maya Mondays. So this is part two of the NHAIR video. I had a couple questions that came in on YouTube, so I'm going to do a follow-up video that just addresses a few of those, um, specifically th three things. Some some questions about scale um, were, were thrown out there, how to work with XGen, and then I just have a cool um, tip and trick for performance that I actually got from Duncan, so I wanted to share that with you guys also. So what we've got here is we've got the Sven character, and I've actually got him set right now where he's actually um, in real world size. So he's 183 centimeters tall, or basically six feet. So the issue comes into play when you're working with dynamics inside of Maya. The dynamic systems in Maya as a general rule or set up where one unit is equal to one meter. So if your guy is 183 units tall, the dynamics engines are going to look at him as though he's 183 meters tall or 600 feet tall. So things are going to look like super slow motion, not what we want to have happen. So I'm going to show you how to, um, to work around that, which is that, that space scale parameter that you saw me play with in the first video. So pretty straightforward. If we take our character scalp, we kind of frame it on this guy. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, create, create, a hair system on this, and we'll just use the default. It doesn't have to be uh, too fancy here. So we'll say create end hair and set to just be NURBS curves. So that's great. We'll go ahead and we'll apply that. So that's cool. So we made that hair system. So if we play this back and make sure that my playback speed is set to uh, to max real time, you'll see that it's you know it's going to drop, but it looks pretty slow motion, right? Like it took a whole second for that hair to kind of drop down, which really isn't realistic. And that's again, because it's behaving as though this character is 600 feet tall or, or 183 meters tall. So to get around that, you can change that scale attribute on the nucleus node. So let's go ahead and just duplicate our, our guy here. We'll grab this dude and I'm gonna duplicate him and just sort of pull him over here and just pull, pull him to the front a little bit. And let's just make sure this scalp's got a unique name on it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create another hair system that's going to be on this guy. So we'll say in hair, create a new hair system, NURBS curves. So let's just tell it to be in a new, a new hair system. So we'll go ahead and we'll create those guys. So now we have two hair systems in our scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this second hair system right here, this guy, hair system number two. And I'm going to assign a new solver to it just to uh, show you what happens when we take solver number two. We'll call it instead of number two, we'll make it 100, right? Because we're going to change the scale on this guy so that the hair behaves realistically. So we'll jump into the attributes for uh, for this node. We'll go down here and we'll increase or put this to 0.01. So it's going to be 100 times um, changing the scale 100 times. So it's going to basically make um, make this so that each each guy uh, behaves as though he actually is centimeters now. And if we play it back, obviously, once we change that, the hair is going to move. Let's rewind you guys. The hair is going to move much faster. You can see how fast it drops. And like we talked about in that part one video is once you make those changes, you're going to need to start to do things like add some more sub steps to deal with that, that speed, as well as start to play around with some of the attributes on this hair to make it, you know, behave a little bit better. So you have to crank all these resistance values up a little bit. I'm going to give it a tiny bit of dampening also just to pull a little bit of the energy out of that guy. But now you can see if we play this back, you know, one one drops appropriately for the scale of my character and the other one obviously hasn't been comp compensated for. So hopefully that clears up a little bit of the um, misunderstanding about scale with dynamics inside of Maya. Just think of each unit being a meter and if you need to make it into centimeters, Put put that value down. Make it 100 times 100. Change the scale value by 100 100 percent, and that'll that'll fix it up for you. And then obviously, if your character was a tenth of the size like he was in my original part one video, where he was only 18 units high, instead of changing that value to 0.01, I just changed it to 0.1 or, or something like that. So it gives you the ability to adjust for scale and, and make the physics engine behave um, however you want for the size of your scene. And it's also kind of cool that you can have multiple um, dynamics. Um, nucleus nodes in your scene. That, that's actually sometimes very helpful if you're trying to segment stuff up a little bit. Um, it gives you the, a, a nice way of working. So the next thing that we're going to talk about, we can just kind of blow all this stuff away. We don't need that. Is um, how to get the Dynamics Engines tied into XGen. So I've got some curves inside of here. If we just do a display on this guy. I want to use these curves to to uh, to generate some guides, and then I want those guides to be driven dynamically and have XGen sort of behave with uh, the end hair driving its its movement. And this is really 
pretty straightforward to do inside of Maya. So we'll go and we'll create a new description on this guy. Um, so we'll tell it's going to be splines. That's fine. Uh, we can just do uniform and we'll place using guide. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that. And we're going to grab all this and we're going to go to our utilities and just say, you know what? Um, we're going to say convert those guys to, um, to guide. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. Let's grab our head here. Oops. Okay, we got that done. So now we've got these guides on our hair. Pretty straightforward. So if we generate some hair there, you can see there's hair. I haven't created any baldness maps or anything like that. So that's that's looking pretty good. We can kind of blow away that stuff. So now, if we want to make these guys go along for the ride, all we have to do down here is come down here and say guide animation, use animation, and we can create um, a hair system. So we'll say create hair system. It's going to come through here, and we'll just leave this at the default. So we'll say uh, make curves dynamic. It's going to go through and do all its magic. So if we clear this out and we play this back now, what we're left with is obviously some... Oops, let's rewind that guy. We're left with some, some dynamically moving curves, pretty straightforward. But if we hit our preview here, and there, you can hide the other ones. Once, you, once you've made those, those, those hair systems, um, you don't need to display them anymore. If we hit our preview, you can see that the um, guides aren't going along for the ride. So the last step of this, after you've made those guys um, dynamic, just rewind everything here. You can, you can blow this away. Is just grab those guys, right? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab most of them. I didn't grab all of them, but you'll get the idea. So grab, grab, grab the majority of those guys and just say, attach hair system. So now, if we display our hair here and we hit play, you can see that everything goes along uh, goes along for the ride. So that's pretty cool, and it's it's actually really pretty easy to uh, to do. Now you'll notice that um, if we blow this away, what we're what we're left with here is a bunch of hairs that are attached to our head, and they're all being attached with follicles that are kind of joined into that um, into that skull cap, and this is one of the trips. Or one of this is one of the tips and tricks that Duncan gave me to uh, to, to speed things up. So we'll just blow everything away here, and essentially inside of Maya, those little follicles that are following along with a piece of geometry, if you've attached them to that piece of geometry using the standard workflow, actually is a performance bottleneck. It starts to slow things down. So if you've got 10,000 or 50,000 dynamic hairs that have all been attached with those follicles, the draw of that follicle is actually very um, time consuming. So when you do rewinds or things like that, it also can, can kind of choke and hang. So Duncan shared with me a cool little trick to, um, to attach the hair in a slightly different way and not have that follicle actually go along for the ride of the draw. So it just gives you a nice speed improvement. So let's just say we've got... Um, We'll jump over to our top view here, and we'll just grab this, and, you know, I'll do something like, you know, whatever, a curve. So I've got that curve, right? And actually, I don't like that. Let's do that again. We'll go to the top view, and we'll just give a little, you know, something like that. So we've got that curve, and if we go and we take this curve, and we have this piece of geometry highlighted, and we run the mel or the inherent command to make selected curves dynamic, which is basically what we did for the uh, for the X-Gen example here, you can see that it's going to try to attach the curve to the selected piece of geometry. So if we go ahead and we hit apply, and we zoom in on here, you can see that it attached it, and it added this little follicle right there, you know, that little, that little follicle. And that's all well and good, because now when I grab this guy, and if we jump over to end here, and we do like an interactive playback, you know, the hair goes along for the ride. But that draw of that follicle and that follicle chasing that surface, like when you have massive quantities of them, 10,000, 20,000 or, or higher, is, is again, a bottleneck, time-consuming. So to, um, to get around that, you can use this cool little, uh, little trick that Duncan showed me. So this, instead of um, attaching the hair that way, we no longer have dynamic hair in our scene. What we're going to do is we're going to re remake our hair as dynamic, and I'm going to use a little line of Mel to attach the hair to the surface without using the follicle, or without the follicle having to go along for the ride of the draw. So let's go ahead and just back into this. We'll create our selective hair and modify to make it dynamic. We'll tell it not to attach it to it this time. We'll say apply on this guy. So now I've got this dynamic curve, right? If we rewind this, we'll put this out to like 3,000 or something long. 
you know, now I've got this dynamic curve. It goes along for the ride. The 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 curve by default is set to uh, to have the tip and at both ends. So you could just say at base, you know. So now it's going to drop the way you'd expect. But obviously, because it's not attached to this piece of geometry, if I move that piece of geometry, nothing happens, right? So to make it go along for the ride, the first thing you need to do is add this object into um, into the solver, let it be known by the dynamics engine. So that's really simple to do just by making it into a passive object. So if you say in mesh create passive collider, I've now got this in rigid in my scene. I just made that passive collider out of this guy. So I now have two in objects that I can join together. And I'm going to do it with this little line of Mel that, uh, that Duncan told me about. So if you just do a connect adder, so we're going to connect the in rigid to the hair system. It's really straightforward. I'll put this at the bottom of uh, the description so you can just copy and paste it. But if you just uh, if you just execute that guy, you know, it's basically grabbing in rigid one, which is which is right here, and then hair system one. So, you know, these names need to, to match your line of mail. That's obviously pretty straightforward. So as soon as we do that, now if we rewind this guy and go to interactive playback, I can move this around. The hair goes along for the ride. And you'll notice that there's no follicle chasing that piece of geometry. It's not in there. It's not going along for the ride. That follicle is is just hanging out at the origin here. So you can see there's there's the follicle. I can move that guy up a little bit and you can see it. There's there's that follicle. So if you had 50,000 of those, those guys are just going to be sitting there in the origin, not chasing the geometry. You're going to get a nice speed improvement from that. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this all makes good sense to you guys. Thanks again for, uh, for checking out Maya Mondays. I'll talk to you guys next week. Cheers.